Okay, so I think I gave you most of the structures. Now let's just talk about the segments and the humor. Anterior segment. So now the segments, I'm going to make them with this purple color. So the anterior segment is all from the aura serrata, which is a structure that um, separates the eye. Actually, no, that's actually for separation of uh, the, the inner layers. It's from here. It's from in front of the aura serrata all the way to the posterior side of the cornea. So anything that you're seeing here in purple, all this, is filled with a liquid that is called aqueous humor. Where is my aqueous humor? Here. Okay. And now let's color the other segment. So this is anterior segment. Now in blue, I'm coloring for you where is the posterior segment. Anything that is inside the blue circle here is the posterior segment. Okay, posterior segment contains vitro, vitreous humor, humor. What is the difference between these two? The difference is that, let me see if I can find a good picture for you to understand this. I thought I had here. The difference is that in the anterior segment, so let's go back to purple. In the anterior segment, which is here, you have this structure here, which is part of the ciliary body. You have a, cor a choroid plexus, which is a lot of little capillaries that help to produce this humor, the aqueous humor. And then the aqueous humor flows around the anterior segment and is drained through this little pore here. These little pores are called sclerovenous sinus. So these are the structures that bring the aqueous humor back to the blood. So it's a constant circulation of this fluid in and out of the anterior segment. The posterior segment, I'm not even going to show you a picture, because you are born with the amount of posterior of aqueous vitreous that you're going to have for your whole life. That doesn't change. It's not filtered. It's not renewed. Do you understand why when you detach your retina? Let's go back to our drawing here. When you detach the retina and you have a risk of losing your vitreous humor, it is a big deal because you're not going to get more vitreous humor from your blood or from anywhere. Okay? So that is very dangerous. Um... What else I want to tell you? Um, there is a place here. Let me get a cleaner eye here for you. There is an area there is called the blind spot. I need something stronger. Hold on. The blind spot is this area. Nope. Let's make it smaller. Um, it's actually just the area where you don't see that continuation of yellow. So this is the blind spot. What is the blind spot? It's an area in your, in your optic disc. The optic disc is here, right? It's an area in the optic disc that you don't have the neurons, the yellow neurons of the retina here. What happens with that? Why don't you have it? Because it's where the optic nerve goes in. And because you don't have any um, neuron here, any photoreceptor, which are part of, you know, the cells that make you see, if an image is formed in this area, you are not going to be able to see that image. So there is a test that we do in the lab where you're bringing an object close to you and there is a certain distance that the object disappears from your field of view. You just don't see it. And then when you start to bring closer and closer, then you go, you're able to see it again. So that is because you have a blind spot. Okay? Um, let me see what else I want to tell you. So let's see if we really understood the functions of all these structures. So we have choroid region, 
the choroid is for uh, allowing blood supply for the, the the retina and the brown pigment helps to absorb light so you don't lose the light that you need for seeing. The ciliary body that has the ciliary muscles that is going to happen to flat, flatten and bulge your lens. The iris which allows for more or less opening through the pup pupil. And the retina, which is the layer where you have the photoreceptor in the eyes. The cornea is a protective region, also helps the refraction of light into your eyes. Okay, so the curvature of the cornea is going to help you form the image in the correct place. Where is the area of most acuity of your vision in the eye? It's in the macula lutea that has the fovea centralis. It's this little region here, and that's a region that has only cones. So we're going to talk about cones and rods, which are the photoreceptors in the eye. Cones are super important for seeing color, and that region has only cones. The other regions of the cornea are spread by, are filled with cones and rods, okay? I said I was going to show you the muscle, so that's the iris and then you have a sphincter pupillae muscle that helps you contract and the dilator pupillae, which is a different muscle that helps you dilate. So obviously the sphincter pupillae is part of your parasympathetic where you constrict your pupil and the dilator pupillae, which is this muscle, the outer muscle here, contracts when you're going to open your iris and that is innervated by the sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system. Told you about the blind spot, and I think now we are ready to talk about the layers of the retina. So this is like the choroid is here, right? Choroid. Oops. Choroid. And then all this here is retina. So which are the layers of the retina? Other than the pigments in the choroid, you also have a pigmented layer in the retina. And this layer uh, is posterior to the layer where you see the rods and cones. So the rods are more abundant than the cones, but the cones are better for color vision and vision in the light. So they are less sensitive to light, that's why um, you use them where the, when there is a lot of light. The cones are more sensitive to light, um, so you don't need so much light to use cones to see. So cones are used for dark, re dark vision, the purple ones here are the cones, sorry, the rods, sorry guys, rods used for dark vision. Cones, which is the yellow here, used for light vision because they are less sensitive to light. So you need a lot of light in your eye to be able to use your cones. This is the path of light, right? So the light goes here and it needs to reach these photoreceptors. And the way the light goes, it passes through the axons from these ganglion cells. These gray ones are the ganglion cells. And then after these cells, you have the bipolar cells. Remember we said you have bipolar cells in the retina? Here they are. These are all neurons, right? And the photoreceptors, which are the rods and cones. So the synapsis starts with the reception of light here. And then the signal output goes this way, right? The light comes through this way, and then the signal goes that way. And where does it come when it gets here? You see how these ganglion cells have axons? They're going to travel through the optic nerve and go to your brain. Does it make sense? If it doesn't make sense, I can bring you back here. So you see, this is uh, the rods and cones. Let's see if we can make it bigger. Rods and cones, bipolar cells, ganglion cells, and the axons travel here, okay? So that, and then travel to where? Thalamus and occipital lobe where 
is your your vision cortex is make sense i hope it does okay so that's the retina i want to show you this which is the retina the real retina so it's a slide of retina under the microscope so you see here the choroid the pigmented layer the layer with rods and cones the nuclei of the rods and cones is in this area nuclei of bipolar cells here and nuclei of ganglion cells here okay this slide is super beautiful when we can, we're, have the chance to see them in the lab uh, we already talked about the fluid I think let, there's just one more thing the lens so the lens let's go back to look at the lens the lens is this structure right the lens is transparent because there is a transparent protein inside the lens called crystalline so when where is the word crystalline here when the crystalline protein clumps which usually happens during aging that is what causes cataracts so either aging or diabetes heavy smoking exposure to intense light uh, sunlight or some congenital issues can lead to formation of cataracts and that's how your eye looks right it's the cloudiness it's the whitish uh, appearance of the lens that is this um, is typical of this um, condition what do you do to treat it there is only surgical treatment which is replace the lens with an artificial lens okay so i will see you in the next video to talk uh, just a little more about rods and cones and how they are mixed and combined together for us to see all the shades of color and then we move on to the other senses okay bye